guys since I'm gonna be going to um, get some groceries why don't I just tell you um, what's inside of me right now um, anyways it's a Saturday afternoon friends are already in the house this whole drama of the my oldest and his um, and the bully in his class continues and the other moms of those other boys who are in the class are also not really thrilled to have their sons hanging out with that particular boy that makes everybody's life miserable him and his mom so that adds more pressure to the what's going on but I was thinking it's the month of Thanksgiving it's when we um, think about I don't know what we're grateful for and there is a lot to be grateful for for sure um, but it's also it, it, it to me okay so when i think about what i'm grateful for you know we all know like those basic things like we're grateful to be alive we're grateful to have family we're grateful to have house over roof over our heads we are grateful for so many things and food on the table car to drive to go to the supermarket enough money to barely make it because diapers you know all the time and you know there is a lot to be grateful for and then you know there is those things that happen that make you feel like resentment um, For example, this morning, um, you know, the babies played outside, so their father took them with this car to fill it up with gas. Gas is going up, by the way, really, really bad. And that whoops all the prices up of everything. But so they filled the car and then they came back, and then they, they play. He watched them a little bit playing outside while I was making cheesecake for somebody ordered one today and and that was it that was like that was it like so and then after that he said, he said oh, I'm gonna go fill out the other car with gas you know the one that he uses this one usually we use the big one for the, the kid baby's car seats are here so it's they never move they just stay there so we have a smaller car that I used to use for work before but that one belongs to us and his parents because they bought it half and anyways it's an old car anyways now it's as old as my second son who is now a fourth grader and you know in Japan after 10 years the cars are pretty old and you gotta get rid of it and get a new one and pay for the next five years for it again and it's just it's just like that all the time it's like a cycle and um, and then and then he said he's gonna get lunch from there's like this place where they um, sell really cheap lunch for the kids in the community in the neighborhood so they can go and play and they have something educational and they get them lunch for like just hundred and hundred is like one buck one buck and that's it like a dollar but it's like a bento box with like rice and meat and veggies it's like balanced food it's really nice but it's nothing like the size in the states for example like it's it's small but you know it's a buck so um i think he left at 11 30 or something like that maybe earlier than that and he came back one o'clock or something i don't remember right now it's about 1 30 so a little bit before one 
and I'm like, and then the boys come and they're like, we're gonna um, make ramen, like, you know those instant ramen that you boil them in water and you put the soup and voila. Yeah, so th that's what they usually eat on Saturday for lunch or Sunday for lunch, and that's, they like those things, instant stuff, easy. But, but I was like, well, your father is coming back with some kind of lunch, but I forgot, like, he, he left so... Anyway, so he took so much time and I was like, whoa, when he came back, they're already making the noodles, so you cannot really reverse. And I was like, wow, it took forever to fill up your car with gas and to, to get for a bunch of boxes of food. And he was like, no, 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 it was like um, the other moms of the classmates, of uh, my oldest classmates were there too, buying lunch probably too, because cheap and healthy. And um, so they started talking, you know, about the issue with this boy in the class and how the kids got interrogated by their school teacher and the principal and they were called, the, they were stamped as the bad guys and um, it's just really not fun. But, but the thing is like, I was like, this is really funny. In this family, the social butterfly or the person who talks to the other moms is not the mom in our family because the mom is staying home with the kids and um, the father is doing all the motherly um, talking and um, and the socializing, socializing with people and being comfortable in his own country and um, knowing perfectly that his wife is in complete isolation in the house and um, has no friends to go out with for lunch or for um, just for an hour out of the house. This is very, very, very rare for me now to be out without the babies and get groceries. That's very rare. Um, and what he's doing, he's using the phone to, to put them to sleep. Um, and he's gonna fall asleep before them, I'm pretty sure. So, I just hope really the twins will be okay. But, um, yeah. So when I when I start thinking about that, and it, it just, it, you know, all the good feelings that you have, all the effort that you put to make things work, it just vanishes because, um, there is no balance, you know what I mean? There is no balance whatsoever. And one is living their life completely normally, just down to their local level, completely homey and talking to people as if it's nothing. And the other is like, so, so I'm gonna just call this video partnership. And the reason I'm gonna go with partnership is because partnership is supposed to be equal. I'm not talking about gender, okay? I'm not talking about mother and father, which is big deal here in Japan too, by the way. Men still rule, uh, but um, I've seen that in my schools multiple times and multiple occasions and with female and male principals, yeah. But um, it's not only that, I, I think it's not about gender anymore. It's about how how it, it i think the social status the the, the the international marriages okay whatever you call it how how is it okay for one to feel comfortable and the other one not and and expect that that marriage is gonna work and it will be lovey-dovey and everything will be wonderful i just don't understand that um and be and uh, and I'm being told, well, we can move to Bulgaria as well, and we can just live there and farm and blah blah blah. It's like it's it's like that that easy. And the reason I'm thinking it's not a good idea is because he's gonna go through the same hell what I'm doing here, and he's very organized and very safe and very wonderful country, developed country. Over there's gonna be double harder because people will look at, first of all, people will always think he's Chinese. I don't know, for whatever reason, all Asian people, Bulgarians think they're all Chinese. So, so he's gonna deal with that. And he dealt with that, by the way, in um, England when he was doing his PhD for six months there and he was walking, people would be like, talking to him in Chinese because they think he is one so he's gonna 
get like he's gonna get over to the top with that he's gonna be really sick of it and on on top of that it's gonna be like I don't know I don't know what to say I don't know what to tell you I don't want anybody even my worst enemy to go through what I have been going through here and so I think international marriages if for example if your language if your common language is English you should be speaking English and you should be in English speaking country I think that's fair and square for both and if they suffer they suffer together they go over they overcome all the trials and challenges together not like one feeling comfortable and doing everything for the other with for both of them like all documentation all paperwork all everything and the other has absolutely no clue about everything so i think i'm i was just really stupid plain stupid but can't do much about it right now i mean i could i could just go home with my kids but I just don't want them to grow without father's presence. Uh, father's presence. Okay, let's talk about father's presence. Father's presence, okay. Was it on Friday or on Thursday? I've had it. Like, my baby girl was really into her tantrum and um, she had her reasons. I had my reasons to not want to be in the same room with her, but, but I did anyway, so what I had to do. And, um,. Um, so I just baited her anyways and did everything but like I've had it and and um, my oldest oh that was that was yesterday Friday that was Friday he came home with tears because that jerk said something again and then he tries to break up his uh, him and his best friend and it's just like watching that and trying to be like the best the best ability of yourselves to be a mentor to your kid where you can teach him to be a nice human but also to stand for his rights um and at the same time feeling that there's nobody to back you up with that you know what i mean like it's just you and your kids in the evenings or any given evening even in the weekends even in the weekends even in any day even in holidays even in summer vacations it's just it's just me and my kids always and so there goes partnership again there goes presence i just read a quote on facebook what was it about it was it was saying how um people can tell a lot about you or like whatever matters to you the most is um is shown by how, the priority in your time or like how you spell your time pretty much i don't remember word word by word but it, it, it is so true it is so true it, just now i um all morning i've been up and down doing the laundry um baking cheesecake for order um uh, checking on the babies um talking to the boys because they have things that had to be things had to be done and then I just uh, and then they started eating all of them lunch and I was like I just I'm not hungry at all like right now I, I'm so not hungry at all and um, and and, and it, it was like lunchtime by the time I finished with everything do you know what I mean like all the all the stuff that I had to do and around the house it, it took me I don't know it used to be before maybe because we woke up a little bit later but usually it took me like by 10 10 30 I'll be done now since yesterday Things are like, like I finish everything by 12 and I'm like, oh my gosh, what, where is the, where did the time go? And so, and so they were eating and I just sat on the couch with my phone just to check because, yeah, there is a family drama going on right now. And my dad has the COVID and so it, there's a lot going on. There's a lot on my plate right now. So I just sat down with the phone and what he does, I see him eating his, his lunch and there were two or three boys, like all the three boys were around and then, then one left. Um, the other one was still eating and then um, one just came to talk with the, to play with the babies. And what did he do? He turned on his phone and he started eating with, with the phone. 
the the room is full of people you know the room is full of people his children forget about me i don't really care i don't really care your children are there and so i just um i just i just said i need to go to to the, the store and i have to get stuff so i just needed to get out of the, i don't want to watch that and I, it's a really pleasant thing to see and um it makes you don't want to do absolutely anything with a person like that it's just resentment resentment and more resentment and i'm sorry if um any of you out there don't understand or um feel like oh she's just like blah 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 i don't care this is my story this is my struggle this is my drama this is my challenge for life i i raised my kids pretty much with a very 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 little presence of a father and yet i am here and i don't even i am asking myself why you're still here for so many years and to this moment i'm still asking myself what are you doing here why are you here why are you going to be talking to somebody in your the company you used to work on the phone next week to get your position back so that you can work here and teach japanese kids english at school why do i have to do that if if not even one particle a little particle out of me wants to be here another minute I think I do it because of my kids, okay? Because my oldest has one more year in elementary school and his brothers have two and respectively three more years in elementary school. And at this point, I don't know. I don't really know. Like, if it's just me, I'm packed up and gone long time ago. Trust me, very long time ago. But I have five kids. And I cannot just plan for myself. I have to plan for them as well. And that like puts a lot of pressure and I just get really smashed by it because it's not just that. There's so much more going on right now. And you don't have anybody to talk to about anything. It's just like, I don't give a crap about anything here. Seriously, I don't, I really don't. And then he tells me, well, it doesn't matter what I do nice from now on. You don't really, you're not gonna, you're not gonna accept it or see it because you're, you're, you already made your mind that I'm really horrible. You know what? You know what? That might be actually absolutely true. No matter how much good you try to do from now on, which you actually don't even do, just the very minimum just to say that there is a presence of a father in the house sometimes that might be really true because there there has been so much more damage done than actual good and um you can call me whatever you want you can think about me whatever you want i don't care what i have seen what i have experienced is something that i will be grateful for life for so that I can connect or I can relate to people who had suffered as well in, in different, in the same kind of situation as moms in foreign place. Um, it's one of the hardest things to do, far from your family, far from relatives, um, not being able to speak your own language, um, not being able to go home regularly and um, not, not being able to your kids to to see and, the, and be around the presence of their other grandma and grandpa and their other cousins um no matter how good you are or no matter how good your intentions are no matter how you try to blah 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 you completely intentionally you understand and you know that it's not working for your spouse, for your partner. And you willingly, purposely, hope that she will get used to it eventually, continue to do so. Yeah. 
this is bold to the point where it's just ridiculous, destructive, and absolutely selfish. And I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just going to stop here and go get groceries and go back home. Bye.